Welcome to OCC training. This session will be covering core delivery procedures. The reasons for core delivery procedures are to control the delivery process, to provide accurate instructions to drivers, to act as a safety net to prevent service interruptions and personal injury, to verify proper connections. The tools needed are the customer HMI, seen here in the left-hand side of the screen, the core status Google Sheet, seen here in the right-hand side, the OCC cell phone, or Mighty Text. The proper delivery procedure. Step one, the OCC receives a pre-delivery call from the driver. Step two, the OCC receives a trailer and truck station photo. Step three, the OCC receives a post-delivery or pre-departure call from the driver. Make sure to note if a driver skips these steps because management needs to follow up with the drivers if they are not performing these tasks properly. The pre-delivery call. The point of the pre-delivery call is to make sure that the driver has the proper information to make the delivery as we want here in the OCC. We give them the information, so we tell the driver, go into Bay 1, come out with Bay 2. We in the OCC need to have the tools in order to tell the driver that. We, we tell the driver that here in the OCC to eliminate any guesswork on the part of the driver. So in order to effectively do that here in the OCC, you need to do this. Check the core bay status Google Sheet for any out of service bays or OOS bays. Check the customer HMI to identify the currently flowing bay and identify the empty bays. Then the OCC instructs the driver of delivery bay and empty bay to be removed. Drivers should not touch anything on site until the call is made. It is important that no valves are turned. When a driver starts turning valves without us knowing, we are at a risk that we do not want to leave ourselves to. The OCC is watching and overviewing the execution of these operations. It is the OCC job to stay on top of each driver when they're at a customer site and to know what valves they are touching. Picture verification. The picture verification is essential in the process to verify that valves are open that we cannot see in the HMI. The trailer valves are manual valves and they do not have any electrical sensors and we cannot see if they are open or closed. So the photos verify that. The driver makes connections in the delivery bay and sends the pictures to the OCC so it can verify that all valves are open properly. The OCC views the trailer pictures to verify all valves on the trailer are open. And we also view the truck station picture. Make sure to note if pictures are not sent in a timely manner or sent in at all. Some sites, such, a such as a classic example as Barnhart, does not have cell phone service. We are working up a remedy there, but normally we get pictures after the fact. In order to mitigate that, we have drivers double check and also we have a good relationship with the employees on site at Barnhart. Let's take a look at the Titan IV valves that are in the open position. There are a total of six valves that you need to make sure are open on the trailer. Four cylinder valves and two manifold valves. Open valve here, open, open, open. Those are the cylinder valves. Then you have your manifold valves. Right here you have your pressure transmitter and you have your vent black valve that is closed. It's across the tube. 
to indicate that it's closed. These are all open, and you can tell they're open because they're in line with the pipe. In line, in line, in line. If they were closed, they'd be this way, in the horizontal position. Let's look at a Titan XL. The Titan XL has seven valves on the rear that need to be open. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then three manifold valves. One, two, three. In line with the tube, in line with the tube, open, 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 in line with the tube, in line. Make sure they are in line to, to verify that the valves are, in fact, open. Let's take a look at the Titan XL front, passenger, and side, driver's side valves in the open position. There are three valves on the rear of the trailer, or the front of the trailer, where the kingpin is. One, two, three. Here is the fourth one that's on the driver's side and the passenger side is right here and open. They are underneath. They're actually located here and here on the unit itself. So let's add those all up. One, two, three, four, five, plus the seven on the back here, make 12, plus the manifold valves make 15 valve turns on the XL. Let's look at a Quantum VPEX. Quantums are one of the easier trailers to open. They have one, two, two manual valves to open and a switch that needs to be turned. This switch is located right here. And you need to verify that these two pressure indicators are in fact pressured up. If you see that the right small indicator here is without pressure or pinned to zero, you know that that trailer is closed. That's important. Take a look at these uh, pressure indicators here, these pressure gauges. The truck station valves. You can see the difference between a Gen 2 and a Gen 1 site. The Gen 2, these are the 101 valves right here. Below that, you have a vent. But this main valve here is the customer valve. And this is the 101 on our Gen 1 site. That is open and in line. Now the post delivery call. The OCC verifies proper connections have been made using the customer HMI. You can see this by checking for full pressure at the delivery bay. Check that the bay has been added in the queue. If all the previous listed into listed to include pictures have been verified, release the driver from the site. So what this is saying is you need to make sure that the queue looks good on the HMI. You have full pressure in the bay that you told the driver to deliver to, and you have verified the photos. As long as the driver has disconnected the proper trailer and there has been no mechanical issues on the trailer that the driver is taking, he is clear for departure. Gen 1 customer sites. These are important. Naturally Potatoes, located in Morris Hill, Maine. Barnhart, located in Coleraine, Massachusetts. Tamek in Presque Isle, Maine. Scredding in St. Andrews, New Brunswick. Cary Medical, located in Caribou, Maine. Agar West, located in Surrey, Prince Edward Island. Friesland Campina, located in Delhi, New York. PSU, Plymouth State University in Plymouth, New Hampshire. SWM in Ancrum, New York. Dragon Cement in Thomaston, Maine, and FMC, located in Rockland, Maine. Dragon and FMC are Gen 1.5 sites, 
And we will get into the specifics as to what makes them different in a later tutorial. Gen 2 customer sites, Dartmouth Hitchcock in Lebanon, New Hampshire, Port Townsend Paper Company in Port Townsend, Washington, Energizer located in Bennington, Vermont, Soundview in Putney, Vermont, Mallinckrodt in Hobart, New York, Empire located in Monticello, New York, Nysig in Mechanicsville, New York, Catskill, located in Monticello, New York, and UMM, located in Machias, Maine. Identifying full trailers and currently flowing in Gen 1 sites. To do this, you navigate to the Truck Queue page, which is identified as here. You view the Truck Queue box one, two, and the truck mode. They're in one truck mode, one truck is in use, indicated by the blue arrow. If it was in two truck mode, you'd have two blue arrows. Notice that 1A is currently flowing, and 2B so is present as well. So for this example, if a driver to arrive, you'd tell him to go into bay three, and then we'd have to figure out what we want to do with the heel here because it is quite large. So identifying open bays and empty trailers in Gen 1 sites. This is a bit more complicated because of the positioning of transmitters. In the Gen 1.5 and Gen 2 sites, we have fixed this problem, but in Gen 1 sites, naturally Potatoes of the World, Barnhart, Tamek, Scredding, Cary, Agarwest, Friesland, PSU, SWM, the transmitters are located in not desirable positions, which lead us to do the following. If you see one flowing trailer at these sites, you need to do this. Back out to where you can select view logs right here on the customer HMI. Select truck queue. Select the most recent file that is at the top. Right click and choose save link as. Save it as a CSV file. Once a download link Appears, go ahead and click that link and then Excel will open a spreadsheet. This spreadsheet will look like this. You might want to spread it out a little bit more to see all the values here. You would want to expand the spreadsheet by clicking on the little dot here and then double clicking as right here between B and C. You can do it between A and B, C and D, doesn't matter. While it is gray, place your cursor on any of the dividers between the columns and double click. This will expand the column so you can read the full column title and also see all the data in the columns below. You'd want to freeze the top row and under the view tab, hit the freeze panes and select freeze top row. This will keep the top row in place, which is important when you are, say, 300 rows down. Understanding the columns. So you want to select truck Q0 or truck Q01, truck Q02, truck Q03. These truck Qs are zeros are the ones that are actually flowing. The ones that are right here, these truck Q1s, is what is actually in the queue. So it is in one truck mode, three is online, we are not in two truck mode. We could get up to four truck mode if we wanted to, even though we have three bays. Nonetheless, you will be able to find out what trailer is actually flowing here and what is in the queue here, truck Q1. Highlight the truck queue yellow, like I said before, flowing three in Q2. Identify the open bays and empty trailers. So when you see a change, that's when you know what was running and what is actually the empty trailer on site that will be taken by the driver who is on site. So in this scenario, you can see bay three emptied at 
804.30, and then bay two moved from first in queue to currently flowing at 805 after the transition. We were flowing on three, two was in the queue. Now we're flowing on two after the truck transition, and there's nothing in the queue behind it. Identifying open bays and empty trailers at Gen 2 sites. It is much easier to identify Gen 2 sites with what is actually in the queue, what is flowing, and what is empty. It's important to see these green bow ties. These are the 101 valves. We have proximity switches and limit switches, which verify the valves actually open on the 101 side. So the only mystery to the OCC is the trailer valves. These green bow ties, like I said, indicate that the 101 valve is open. If there is a closed 101 valve, more likely than not, there is no trailer there. And you also can verify that by the pressure. The pressure is down to 4.3. There is nothing in that bay that is completely vacant. Right now we are flowing on bay three at 610 pounds and bay one is at 1,365 pounds and just sitting there as next. Identifying open bays and empty trailers. You will encounter many different deliveries during your shift and stay diligent and diligent about these procedures. The systems are mechanical and they will fail from time to time. Please ask questions. Now is time to test your knowledge. Please take this quiz. Thank you.